One of the myths about the iPad Pro is that it has like a textured screen that feels like paper when you're writing on it with the Apple Pencil. And I remember when I first got my iPad Pro, I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't have any texture to it at all. In fact, the iPad Pro screen feels identical to the old iPad screens or even your iPhone screen. It's really smooth glass. So I talked about this in my review that I posted months ago and several people said, hey Brad, why don't you use a screen protector? Cause uh, those things will add like a little bit of texture to it. And it also might help protect your iPad. So I was like, good idea, internet. There are dozens and dozens of screen protectors out there that you can pick up. Um, I wasn't sure you know, where to start, so I took the probably the two highest rated ones that I found on Amazon. The ones I grabbed were the Spigen Glass R Slim and the iCares True Glass Pro. So the first one that I installed was the Spigen. Spigen. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Spigen. Spigen. Installation wasn't too bad. I always kind of freak out a little bit when installing these things because you only have one shot to get it on right without getting like dust and crud stuck under it or like a bunch of big air bubbles. But overall, uh, installation went pretty well. Now it came with a wet wipe and it came with a dry wipe. The instructions told me to use the wet wipe on the screen first to clean it off. And then it said, go ahead and install your screen protector. I thought maybe I should leave the liquid on there. Maybe the liquid provides some kind of binding to keep it closer to the screen? I, I didn't know, so I followed the instructions. I probably should have used the dry wipe because I'll have more on that in a minute. So when I put it down, there were a couple air bubbles in it, but they were really easy to kind of squeegee out. Now, once I got the screen protector on, I noticed that there was like kind of a rainbow effect, like if you pour gasoline into water. And that was my first hint that maybe I should have used that dry wipe before uh, putting the screen protector on. Now I have to say it was it was really pretty subtle and it depended on the light and how the light hit it if I saw that rainbow effect. If the screen was on and I was playing a game or reading, I really didn't notice it most of the time. But drawing, I am here to talk about drawing. Well, the screen protector is made out of tempered glass and it is pretty smooth. It's not quite as smooth as uh, the actual iPad screen, but there isn't like a texture or a resistance to it. And so I'd say that drawing on it feels slightly different, but it's not that different and it's nothing like drawing on paper. Although I read all the reviews on Amazon and nobody said that it felt like paper, so I, I didn't really anticipate it having any kind of like hard coarse texture to it. But once I started drawing, I immediately noticed a problem. I've been using Procreate a lot lately, like a half hour to two hours every day. So I'm really familiar with the program and w when you use something that much, it starts to feel natural. You know how the pencil should feel in your hand when you're drawing on it. And so I immediately noticed that there was a slight wobble to my pencil lines. So I turned on my trusty old ink tool, which gives me nice, clear, straight lines. And sure enough, the uh, the wobble line thing was really pronounced with that tool. I think there's just enough difference when you put that tempered glass on, like that little space is just enough distance between the pencil tip and the screen to kind of reduce the accuracy a little bit. I think if you use more textured tools, you're probably not gonna notice it so much. It drove me crazy. In some apps, the wobble effect is more pronounced than others. For example, in my favorite coloring book app, it wreaked havoc. So my take on the Spigen is that if you are not drawing with it, it's a nice screen protection if you are drawing with it, you probably shouldn't. On to the second one. This one is called the iCares True Glass Pro. Now I was excited about this one because uh, somebody in an Amazon review said there was a nice texture to it and it felt like drawing on real paper. It does not feel like drawing on real paper. After all this, I am starting to wonder if Apple fans understand what the word texture actually means. If you're an Apple fanboy and you don't know, I'm not gonna define it for you. I'm gonna make you look it up. From a, from a feel standpoint, um, this is tempered glass as well, and it feels identical, to me anyway, uh, to the other one I used, the Spigen. So as a screen protector, I liked it, but installing it was insane. So when you start, there's gonna be a sticker that says step one, start here. What that really means is this is step five, wait a little while. Step one actually involves this really big sticker with the number seven on it. No, 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 wait, 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 that was step two. Step one involved these rubber bands. This is all incredibly crazy. Fortunately, the package has a QR code on it that you can scan for help. I don't wanna scan a QR code. So instead of going to the app store and searching for a QR code scanner, I went to the Google and searched for the instruction manual. On the site, I found this nice video clip. I watched the beginning like three times because I thought my sound was broken. There's actually no sound on the video. The reason I thought there was sound is because they were using explainy hands. You only use explainy hands if you have explainy words. That's how explainy hands work. 
So even though the instructions weren't good, the protector itself was actually pretty nice. To me, it really felt pretty much identical to the last one I was using. Uh, it was kind of the same thickness. Um, in, in a lot of ways, it really didn't feel like it was there until you drew with the ink pen. And sure enough, uh, I think, you know, just having that little bit of thickness there, it brought that wobble right back. So I used this one a little longer. I used it for a full week. Um, still not a fan of it. Still haven't found uh, anything that kind of redeems it. I suppose if you really, really want a screen protector, it's a good screen protector. If you're really focused on accurate drawing, I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, there is one more thing. On the package, it says it can withstand a drill bit. So I know the next question that I'm going to get in the comments is, am I going to try any screen protectors for the Surface Pro? No. The main thing I was looking for in these screen protectors was I was wondering if they would provide any kind of texture and improved drawing experience. Now with the Surface Pro, at least the Surface Pro 4, the pen has a nice little rubber tip to it, and that provides just enough resistance. It doesn't feel anything like real paper, but it does give you kind of a nice drawing feel, and that's kind of what I was looking for. So I personally don't have any need to try a screen protector for the surface unless I was actually trying to protect the screen. So those are the ones I've tried. Most of the ones that I have looked at uh, don't have any kind of texture to them. They look like they probably have a smooth finish. If you know of one that does have a nice, rough, coarse texture, um, I would like to try it. So let me know what it's called down in the comments or on Twitter. I have a feeling if it has like a, a coarse surface to it, it might feel good for drawing, but it probably enhances the wobble of the pen a little bit maybe. I don't know, but I'll try it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in a week or two and take care of yourselves.